of the service, blessed be his holy name. Amen. Amen. And I extend greetings to you in the marvelous name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'll thank you and commend you for your effort to be here. Because when the day of fellowship comes, and you put everything aside, and you give time to the word, and the word will stand for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When it is time for fellowship, and you take it serious, and you comment your time, and you allocate your time, and you're placing the word right, the word will stand for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God is a respecter of those that respect his word. He's a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the living God. I thank God again for the week. I know the week was well spent by all of us in our post of duty. I thank God for Brother Pedro, his family, Brother Chris Bernard and family. We thank God also for those we don't see. We bless the name of the living God for them. But I guess now we thank God for him. And we also thank God for Brother Sylvester and family, Sister Priscilla, Sister Gloria, and little Sister Michelle. Hallelujah. We thank God because we are a family of believers. Hallelujah. Amen. When families come together, that's what the message is. Amen. The message is a family affair. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why when we come together, we are not coming as a, just a church. We are not just, we are not a denomination. Hallelujah. Amen. We are family of believers. Hallelujah. Amen. Because that's what the message is. Hallelujah. Amen. Because a family have relationship, hallelujah. Yeah. A family cares for one another, hallelujah. Yeah. That's why the message is a family affair, hallelujah. Yeah. It's not a denomination out there somewhere. You know, last Sunday we were talking about, you know, people limiting God, hallelujah. Yeah. Sometimes we fall into that offense, hallelujah. Yeah. Because you can limit God by placing him in a building somewhere. Yeah. Or placing him in a book somewhere. Yeah. But God is everything, hallelujah. Yeah. But when we come together, we are coming because God said, forsake not the gathering of the saints hallelujah yeah. and any place that you feel comfortable hallelujah. because you have to be comfortable that's one thing about fellowship you must be comfortable yeah. if you're not comfortable then you're wasting your time hallelujah yeah. you must be comfortable to fellowship you must go to a place where your heart is happy yeah. because if you're not happy you cannot worship god yeah. hallelujah yeah. you must be free hallelujah yeah. because your father because you to come for fellowship the prophet said when you come to communion yeah. communion is not the act of eating bread it's not the act of drinking wine communion is communion with god that's the word of god that's what the prophet said so when jesus calls you for communion he calls you to talk to you so you can talk back to him hallelujah all the other ceremonies are just ceremonies hallelujah but the most important thing is that you're talking to jesus and he's talking to you hallelujah if you can do that you're done you're you're you're, you're fulfilled all righteousness hallelujah now you can stand your ground Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. Now we know we are listening to the message in the morning. Prophet was preaching in the morning. I listened to Todd Exodus. Hallelujah. I also listened to the power of decision. Hallelujah. And we listen to the result of decision. Hallelujah. And the prophet is laying emphasis on many things. You probably heard him talk about something that we're going to be sharing this morning. That is a little scripture that he quoted while he was preaching. When he said that you know that all things work together. Amen. For them that love the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to draw inspiration from that this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we can be on our feet. Glory. There are several things that God, I pray, will just teach us from there. Hallelujah. Amen. Because, you know, sometimes we want to blame God. We want to say that maybe God is doing something wrong to us. You know, we are, we are quick to make those analyses sometimes. But the word of God is so simple that if you pay attention, you can see where you're going wrong. Hallelujah. And when you see where you're going wrong, you correct your ways. Hallelujah. When Jesus was 12 years old, he went with Mary and Joseph to, to Jerusalem. Hallelujah. And you know what happened at Jerusalem? They left Jesus. And they went on three days journey, brothers and sisters. And the prophet said, they left the world. Yeah. After they left the world, what they have to do? They have to go back. They have to go back yes, and pick up the world. Amen. Is that right? Yeah. So if you leave the world, you got to go back to the world. Hallelujah. Yeah. The world will not chase you down. Amen. You got to come back to the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When the prodigal son left his father, he took his possession. And one day he realized who he is. I am a son. What he had 
have to do. He go back to his possession. Hallelujah. Amen. And every child of God must understand that. Amen. So you don't go around, you know, telling stories and complaining and, you know, trying to analyze yourself and give all kinds of excuses. You go back to the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the word is as effective as it was when it was given. Hallelujah. Amen. The word is in our collection. Hallelujah. Amen. It's like if even man is trying to find what to do with flu. They cannot figure out flu season. You see now, man in their knowledge, they don't know how to deal with that. That's why every year, you have to go and get a flu inoculation. Man doesn't know what to do, hallelujah. But the word of God is once and for all. Jesus died once and for all. Jesus died once and for all. Once you receive the Holy Ghost, is once and for all. Once you're sealed, it's once and for all. You don't give self to them, seal tomorrow, you're sealed. Once you're sealed, you're sealed. Hallelujah. The prophet said, once you're sealed, devil is sealed out, hallelujah. Because God doesn't improve his word. His word is perfect. His word is amen. There's no improvement in the word of God. Sisters, I greet all of you. Those that will watch the message on tape, I greet you. I pray it's a blessing as well. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because we do know many people watch whatever we're preaching here. And I thank God for that. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because the word of God must be spread. Hallelujah. Yeah. Somehow somebody has to hear the word. Yeah. And I pray the word is a blessing unto you as it's up to me as well. Hallelujah. So this morning, our title will be the relationship between all things and loving God. Hallelujah. What is the relationship between all things and also loving God? So it's an excerpt from that phrase that all things work together to them that love the God. But what is the relationship between all things working for good and also loving God? That's a condition there. But some of times, you know, we are so much laying emphasis in Oh, all things will work together for good. Mm. But you're missing the important part there. Mm. It's for a particular set of people. Mm. It's not for everyone, friends. Yeah. It is for those that love the Lord. Hey. That is the condition. So this morning, I pray God will lay emphasis on that for us. Hallelujah. Yeah. So let's open the book of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 from 28 to 31. That's the first scripture. I have so many scriptures all over the place. Like you know, I love to read the scripture. And I thank God I can read a little faster. That way I don't hold you too long. It's about 10 minutes to 12. So we do the best we can that by maybe, um, you know, 12, 30, 12, 40, we should be done by his grace. Hallelujah. Amen. So the first scripture will be Romans chapter 8. From verse 28 to 31. So once you have that, you just bow down your heads in prayer. Most excellent Lord. My God, my all, thou who has given us the word, thou who died for the word to comfort, thou who declare that the work of salvation is finished, thou who say, come unto me, all ye that labor and have have led him, for your yoke is easy, and you will take our yoke upon yourself. My Lord, my God, it is not he that will it, nor he that run it, but the Lord that showeth mercy. This afternoon, Lord, we have left everything on the side. Our work, our education, our exam, everything we have to do, we put it on the side. We came together, Lord Jesus, for no other reason but to come before you. That we can increase our faith. Because faith comes from hearing your word. Then after we hear your word, we must be doers of the word. So that this world we know that Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Thou who sent us a prophet for our day, William Marion Branham, to declare the counsel of God to this dying world, to declare this son of man is a son of man, to come and declare that we are at the end time, to come and declare that all the mysteries of God is finished. Amen. To come and inspire the pride. Amen. To be focused on the word. Amen. To come and dedicate the pride. Oh, because Apostle Paul came to lay the foundation. But here he comes, the final messenger of the final church 
marriage to do what? To consummate the marriage between the bride and the bridegroom. Because now we can say that the invisible union of the bride and the bridegroom has taken place because the bride they know who they are, because they understand who the bridegroom is, because the bridegroom is not hidden from the bride. Hallelujah! And blessed and honor be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, anyone can open this book, any let man can open the Bible, but it takes the Holy Spirit to inspire it. I know our prophet has spoken, but there is still a fivefold ministry to take the book and run with the book, to speak the word of God, to declare the counsel of God, to heal the sick, hallelujah, because all the gifts of God must be manifested by the fivefold ministry. And anyone that believes, hallelujah, you say, I am ready, I am willing. If we lay hand on the sick, they shall recover according to our faith. So shall it be done unto us. My Lord, my God, come down this afternoon and let your glory fill this place. Let your mercy fill this place. Let your joy fill this place. Take me out of this place and speak, my Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God as we dedicate the service. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We know all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose, for whom he did for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Amen. And whom he called, them he also justified. Amen. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Hallelujah. You may have your seats. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. What are we talking about this morning? We are talking about what we know. The scripture is clear. There are certain things I want you to pay attention to. The scripture is telling us there is a calling. For Jesus said, no one can come to me except my father will call him. Amen. There must be a calling. And that calling must be according to the purpose of God. Amen. Not according to what you think or what I think. Amen. Not according to what anybody else thinks. But according to only his thoughts. Amen. Because his infinite in thought. He is omnipotent in his thoughts. There is no one that can think but him. The scripture is very clear. It's according to his own purpose. Hallelujah. And when this condition is met, there is a foreknowing. In other words, before the foundation of this world, you were foreknown. That is what God was asking Job. Where were you? When the sons and daughters of God shouted for joy. Before the foundation of this world, in other words, I knew you. That's what he told Jeremiah. Before your mother formed thee, I knew you. Hallelujah. Glory. There is a foreknowing. If you are not foreknown, you will not be predestinated. Hallelujah. It's after you are foreknown, then the predestination comes in. Because if God does not predestinate, it will not happen. Then you will say, why will God fall the sinner? Because God already knows who will be a sinner and who will not be. God already knows who will take his word and who will not. God already knows because he said, and so I hate Jacob by love. He knew it before they were even born. Hallelujah. Because the Bible is so clear that Abel, by faith, he offered a good, excellent sacrifice. What is that faith? Because he knew who his father was. He knew where we fell from. He knew it was by blood. It was fatherly. It was predestination. And so he offered a more excellent sacrifice. 
of fruit. Hallelujah. That's why the scripture says, to them that love for the Lord. The scripture is not talking about to them that the Lord love. Why? Because the love of God is unconditional. But you've got to return something back. But if you are predestinated, if you are phenomenal, it behooves you not to love the Lord. Amen. So for you to know whether you are predestinated or not, do you love the Lord? It's a question you must answer and we cannot get to it because Jesus asked the same question. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the word of God. Hallelujah. You have been justified. You have been glorified. But do you love the Lord? That's a question this morning. It's a condition. There is a relationship between all things working together for good and loving the Lord. Amen. It's a conjunction. They are not in science what they call they are not mutually exclusive, if you understand that much. Mutually exclusivity means one can happen without the other. No. They are compound, which means they must happen together. together. Amen. Okay now? You cannot tell me you love the Lord, but all things are not working together for good for you. Once you love the Lord, all things must Amen. work together for you. Amen. Because the word of God cannot fail. For all things not to work together means God is lying. And God cannot lie. Amen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word cannot pass away. Amen. So if you love the Lord, brothers and sisters, Amen. and dead and are watching this, I'm telling you this morning, all things must work together for you. Amen. Doesn't matter what I see. Doesn't matter if I don't see it. It was by faith that my father so faith obtained good report according to Hebrews chapter 11. It was by faith that Abraham offered a good sacrifice to the Lord. Abraham believed God against all odds by faith. Amen. It was not because of what he's looking at. Abraham was called by God. Abraham was predestinated. But Abraham loved God with all his heart. Because it took 25 years for the manifestation of the promise. But he was looking at the promise, sir. He was not looking at how long it took. That is the love of God being expressed by Abraham. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he believed God against our all. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Blessed be the name of the living God. Amen. Jacob, a shepherd. Hallelujah. You know what Jacob has to go through from marrying his first wife, serving another seven years to Laban, to marry the second one. Hallelujah. Yeah. And trying to run away from Esau. When he met Esau, he offered everything he had. Esau said, I don't need all these things. He said, just so we can still be friends. So you don't kill me. Esau said, I'm not going to kill you. But Jacob, at one point, there he was asking God for mercy. There he fought with the angel of God. There he used a stone to make his pillow. He showed the love of God in him because the scripture tells us he was mindful of the position of the firstborn. He was mindful there was something about him that he desired to take that gift. It was the love of God in him. Hallelujah! Amen. For the tribe of Israel today, they came out from Jacob. He was a man that fought with God and won. Hallelujah! Amen. Because he had the love of God in him and he had the decency when he came to God face to face he said bless me now hallelujah yeah, yeah. do you have that decency when you came straight to God do you ask God for blessing or do you curse God and mock God with your mouth hallelujah because God is in simplicity he's in where man is expected but there he will be hallelujah Amen. bless him in the name of the living God Amen. they are not their God they will do great exploit hallelujah Amen. bless him in his holy name Amen. Joseph Joseph the dreamer, at one point in his life, oh, we, we may get to that a little bit. Because you see now, Joseph did not know the importance of the shepherd. You see, Joseph didn't know the importance of the shepherd. When his brothers came to Egypt and his father, Joseph told them something that he shouldn't have said. Joseph said to them, when Pharaoh asks you, what do you do? was that there's something about being a shepherd hallelujah because when God began to move it was through being a shepherd that, that even Moses was able to see God what was Moses last call? what was he doing before he saw God he was a shepherd was he not a shepherd hallelujah then what about God himself oh Jesus a shepherd hallelujah where was Jesus born in a shepherd hallelujah you see how God is moving but Jacob and David and Joseph Joseph by inspiration, hallelujah. 
Joseph loved the Lord despite not knowing that the Lord is coming as a shepherd. But he loved the Lord with all his heart. And the love of God was in his heart. And God called him. And God predestinated him. And God anointed him. And God showed him all the dreams. But he has to tarry. He had to take a cut. He had to take a bend. He had to take the ways he never expected. But still, he loved God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. He had every opportunity to defy his body. This brings me to something very sensitive. Friends, do not defy your body on any account. Do not defy your body and say you love God. They don't work together. They don't. If you say you're a child of God and you're out there sleeping with every woman you can see, you need prayer. You say you're a child of God, you're a woman, sleeping with every man out there, you need prayer. You're playing with the word of God, you're playing with fire. Your soul needs to be delivered, hallelujah. The word of God cannot be taken for granted. Joseph had every right to defy his body. He could have slept with Potiphar's wife right there. But what did Joseph say? For the sake of the God of Abraham, for the sake of the God of my fathers, I will not defy my body. You can put me to jail. You can do whatever you want. And that's where Joseph ended up. Because he has the love of God in him. That's why everything worked together for good for him. Because he had the love of God in him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Daniel found himself in Babylon. But he had the love of God in him. Amen. He was called. Amen. He read by the book. He saw where he was written by Jeremiah. Amen. 70 years will be in bondage. Amen. And the 70th year God will come and deliver you. He's looking at the promise. He's not the one that made the promise. He's more than able. It may tarry, friends. Every promise that God made belongs to us. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're not looking at time and event. We're looking at the one that made a promise. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because see, he told Abraham. He said, 400 years. Yeah. Your children will be in bondage. Yeah. But the prophet said, it took 445 years. God added 45 years extra. Yeah. Why is that? Because God was waiting for a pharaoh that doesn't know Joseph. So he can inflict some pain and cause the people to move. That was the first exodus. And this top exodus must be the same way. God is waiting for his children not to be comfortable with the things of this world, not to be comfortable with every politics you hear, but to stay focused on the word of God and let the top exodus happen so we can go home. That is the condition of the church should be today. That's what the brass should be today. Not in politics, not in argument, but stay in dust here the Lord because God made a promise and it's more than ever. Hallelujah! Let's say in the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, my Lord, was born in Avenger. He was in the ship where he was born. The ultimate sacrifice. Oh, the love of God. The love of God to man. Hallelujah. How do you measure this love? Do you love him? Hallelujah. Amen. The scripture said, James, he said that the trial of our faith will work our patient in James chapter 1. Amen. But what does that mean? James before quantified the word patience. He said that patience now will not seek anything but perfection. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He said, let that patient now have a perfect work, wanting nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. You can see that in James chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. The trial of our faith will work out perfection. Amen. But what does that mean? Remember that. He said, the trials of our faith, not every trial, but your faith. Amen. So what does that mean? Your faith means you love God. Yeah. You see now, there's always a qualifier there. Pay attention to that. Because people think when I'm going through this, oh, my faith is being tried. Do you love God? Amen. That's the first condition. Yes. Love is correction. Amen. Because if a man loves his children, you must correct them. Amen. If you don't correct them, what are you doing? You're leading them to astray. Amen. Correction is love. And love is correction. You see, when we say, when you come to church, judgment begins at the pulpit. What does that mean? It means when the word of God is coming to you, you judge yourself. Amen. Because the scripture says, judge yourself today so you will not be judged. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why we need commitment.
communion of the saints. That's why you don't just sit home and say, I'm just listening to the tape. Because after you listen to the tape, you don't have any emotion. Because the tape has no emotion. The tape is recorded, it's sealed, hallelujah. You need to be ready as have some emotion. Because the, the prophet said, if the word of God has no emotion, it is dead. Hallelujah. If the word has no emotion, it means it's what? Dead. So the word of God must have emotion, hallelujah. There must be a stimulation, hallelujah. How do you know a still birth? A still birth is a child that has no emotion. That's a still birth. Hallelujah. A still Christian is a Christian that has no emotion, no stimulation. You have nothing to give. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. God bless you, brother Gessner. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. So you know you have been predestinated. You know that God foreknew you. But what do you have to do, the scripture said, you must conform to his image. Amen. There's no two ways about it. For all things to work together for you, you must love God. Amen. If you don't love God, you're your own. Amen. Anything can go wrong, you're your own. But for you to say, this is the trial of my faith, you better know where your faith is rested. A man came to the prophet and said, William Graham, I'm going to challenge you, he said. He challenged William Graham, he said that devil can heal the sick. This man was telling the prophet how devil can heal the sick. How that the witchcraft takes like a handkerchief or whatever and spin it on the blood and turn it around and touch it on the sick and the sick recover. Now he said to the prophet, now I prove you wrong. Because the prophet said devil cannot heal. So the prophet said, man, let me tell you something. He said, you see, if you go to Africa, you will see witchcraft too. People are cut off a skull of somebody and they can do whatever they gotta do and it seems like the sick recover. He said, what's making them recover? They were praying to God by using the wrong channel. They were trusting God to heal them. They placed their faith on God but on the wrong channel. You see that? So he said, devil can never heal. Because Jesus said, if devil can heal, he has destroyed his own, his own kingdom. Because he'll be against his kingdom. Because devil's job is to destroy and not to put together. So it depends on where you're laying your faith. That's why you have to make sure your faith is grounded on the say the Lord. And if your faith is there, that's the love of God in you. Hallelujah. Now, Proverbs 23 also, 13 to 14 says, with help not correction from the child. For if thou beatest him with a rod, he shall not die. Now I know. Many people will say, oh, you're saying to be somewhere with a rod. That's not what I'm telling you. We are speaking the word of God here. Hallelujah. Everything is done in wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Nobody is telling anybody to go take a rod and start beating a kid. Hallelujah. Amen. But I'll tell you something. If God gave you wisdom and you know how to speak, you can speak to a child. And the child can break down. If God gave you wisdom, how to use his word, you can speak to somebody and they will listen to you without raising a rod, without raising nothing. Why? Because the power of the word of God is in the lips. Hallelujah. God bless you, my brother, brother Sylvester. God bless you, sister Priscilla. God bless you, sister Gloria. And I know our little sister Michelle. God bless you. It's a family, family affair. Now, I am happy because what God showed me has all happened. Because last night God showed me that everyone who's coming here will come here today. So that in my dream. And everyone who comes here will come here today. You're all here. You haven't been here for about a month. But God said you're coming here today. I saw the place. I saw everybody here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Is that right? Did I not tell my family? I, I, I saw other people that I'm going to mention. I will leave that alone. Hallelujah. But I'll tell you something, friends, we are talking about loving God today, and I have no greater someone to preach than this. I can preach thunder coming from the sky, but if you don't have the love of God in you, it's in vain. William Graham held the sick, and the next day they got sick again. Lazarus was raised from dead, and he, was, he died again. So all the gifts is to point you to who the giver is. The gift, the sign is not the end game. The end game is have the love of God in you. You have the power to overcome every vow of the enemy. But the condition
condition is straight. You must love God. Now, how do you show God you love him? By taking the things of God very serious. Do not play with the things of God. It's not for me to decide. It's not for you to decide. When it's time for prayer, dedicate yourself to prayer. When it's time for service, dedicate yourself to service. Watch God if God will not prove you. And open the windows of heaven according to his word. To show up blessing more than you can ever contain. When it's time to give your tithe, give your tithes. When it's time to give the offering, give, obey God in every word. God will not fail you. If I have any secret, I'll tell you. Because I know this is true. When you say to me, I love God. I'm a Christian. What do you do for God? Where's the love of God in us? God is waiting for us to manifest that love so he can move. You are holding the blessings of God at base. You are the one holding God from moving. God is saying, try me and see if I am not in my word. Time is fast spent, friends. This is the word of God. All things must work together for good. If you love God, God is saying here, I have called you. I have ordained you. I have familiar you. I have predestinated you. I glorified you already. It's done. Hallelujah. Yeah. Do you want it? The job is done. Because see now, we have gone through the scripture to see before some of our brothers and sisters come here. Because when you come in the middle of the message, you miss some of the message. Hallelujah. I know we all live from far places, but I pray that God will increase our first step to run to his house. Because it might be the day you didn't come, that's the day he drops some blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You understand that last week, on Thursday, I received a prayer request from a co-worker. I still have it on my phone. He said, Brother Paul, pray for my daughter. The daughter was hospitalized and needs a heart transplant. Urgent. She never came to this church. She's not a blessed believer. But she was my co worker at Montefiore six years ago. And there at Montefiore, they knew something. A child of God was there. When you love God, every place you go, they will know who you are. You cannot be a hidden Christian. Jesus said, if you don't speak for him here, he will not speak for you then. You can't say you love God and there's no love of God in you. And you're shy. You can't tell people I'm a child of God. She knew there is something God can do. Now it's, it's the time for her daughter to die. The heart is needed. She sent for prayer. We went into war. We are in war on Thursday. We are on one Friday. We are on one Saturday. On Saturday, the Lord put in my heart, sent a text to her. You know, when you're sending certain tests, sometimes you say, am I sending this? I say, go to the hospital. Go put a hand on that, on that young girl and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, receive a new heart. Mm -hmm. I sent the test to her. She said, but Paul, she has been moved to Maryland to a specialist there. The husband is there. I said, send the test to your husband. She did. She did. Sunday, I'm here preaching. I came down here. I got a text. The heart is working normal now. Amen. Amen. Everything was taken out of the tubes. She's breathing normal. Amen. Wow. And when she opened her eyes, she said, I want to talk to my mother. That's the sister that was sending me the text message. Amen. I said, perhaps, wherever she went, she saw the mom praying. Amen. Amen. She saw the mom praying. Amen. Now, you, can, you cannot say that everything we're saying is because we're a message believer. God has allowed some people to have the same experience. On YouTube, I watched a man who died. And according to his own testimony, that's his testimony. I am not validating anybody's testimony. That's his testimony. That's what he said. Why he was traveling like the speed of light. He said there are other lights that were passing him. And when he got to where he was going, he said, the Lord told him, those lights passing were prayers. People were saying for you, we are coming like lights. Now, you may say, well, I don't know what he's talking about. Isn't it written in the book of Revelation that when John went beyond the curtain of time and got to heaven, what did John see? The prayers of the saints were collected before the Lord, like a sweet smelling servant. Hallelujah. Amen. So now you can see your prayers not in vain. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All things work together to them that love the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We just spoke about 
Joseph. The love of God in Joseph made him not to sin. He has every right to sin. His life was in danger. He's with the wife of Potiphar, the commander of Egyptian army. They can just cut off his head in one second. All he had to do is drop his pants. But Joseph said, for the sake of the God of my father, I will not defy my body. That's the love of God in him. Amen. I'm not telling you Joseph is perfect. Because we just also told you by example, that when Jacob came to Egypt with the sons of Jacob, that Joseph said to Jacob, go and lie. Told him, lie before Pharaoh. Tell Pharaoh, you are not shepherds. Because shepherds are not regarded here. Tell them that you are cattle rearers. That was the word of Joseph. That's a lie. Hallelujah. So don't say to yourself, well, I'm not perfect. God knows that. But when you're trying everything you can to live a righteous life, and devil is against you, stand your ground. Amen, Amen. Amen. All things Amen. must work together for you. That's right. Amen. Doesn't matter what it is. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But the love of God yes. that he has given to us, yes. if you read John 3, 16, which you know the scripture, that God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. Whosoever believeth in him will not perish, Amen. but have eternal life. Amen. Why? Because God did not send his son to this world to condemn it, but that the world through him might be saved. It is the ultimate love he could display to you and I. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. The ultimate love. Now, Jesus is asking you and I a question this afternoon. The same question he asked Peter. And he asked all the disciples in the book of John 21. John 21, from 1 to 17. There's a conversation going on there. This is after the Lord has died. And the Bible recorded this is the dark time he came to show himself. But I want you to pay attention to something that happened there. Because it happens to all of us. All of us. Peter is a fisherman by trade. He has to make a living. Are you going to fault him for making a living, friends? He has to go fishing. Jesus is dead. Jesus is risen. He has appeared twice unto them. But that day, Peter told the disciples, I go fishing. And they all said, I go with you. That's how the Bible put it. I go fishing. They said, I go with you. And they all went fishing. <clears throat> they forget whatever Jesus said. Yeah. Stay. Pray. Tarry. No. I go fishing. You know the worst thing when you went fishing? He was naked. Mm. Had no clothes on. He's running around the water. Naked. Mm. The seed of Abraham, the chosen vessel, the one that Christ gave the key, is run around naked. And here comes Jesus. What a pathetic sight. He's standing beside the water, and he said to them, Children, do you have any meat? I said, No, we, we fish again all night. We caught nothing. He said, Okay, can you cast your net on the other side also? They did. And again, when they did, the same thing that happened the first time. The net was packed with fish that they could not even move the net anymore. They turned around and said, Peter, it is him. That's the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> That's him again. Yeah. So immediately they said this, Peter was looking for something to cover himself. That's what we all do most of the time. Amen. God has called us. God has shown you who he is. You've seen his mercy. You've seen his grace. Yes. But yet, you're busy doing your own thing. That's what Peter was doing. In the most derogative way, naked. When he should be preaching people to The master did what he had to do. But he had some questions for Peter. So I'm going to go straight to the questions. Because after he's done this, the, you know, we, we sing that song. We have fish and bread upon the fire. And the master called it to come and die. That's where that song came from. Come and die. Because there Jesus said, come and die. But here, Amen. he had some questions for Peter. He now began to ask Peter a question. He said here, Simon. He said, Jesus said unto them, come and die. Then, after that, so when they had died on 21.15, John 21.15, so when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, son of Jonah, Lovest thou me more than this? Yeah. That is the topic we are preaching today. The love of God compared to all things we work together. 
The Bible says all things will work together for good to them that love the Lord. So you have to combine it. And you scientists here, we say they are not mutually exclusive. They are combined. They are compound. So you cannot, there's no, you can say, I love the Lord, but all things are not working together. But all things are working together, I don't love the Lord. They are combined. It's a compound statement. It's not mutually exclusive. It's not the one and not the other. So here, Jesus is trying to understand something. He said to him again, Lovest thou me? He said, Lovest thou me more than this? He said, Yeah, Lord. Thou knowest that. You know, I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. That's what we're doing here. That's why we have this little place. It's to feed the lamb of God. We have to continue this until he comes. There's no end. The coming and going of William Graham is not the end. Bible never said that that's the end. The fivefold ministry is not to end. It will continue until Jesus Christ comes. Every gift that's even given to the fivefold ministry is given to the bride. For none is greater than the other. Hallelujah. The Bible is clear. This side shall follow them. It's right there, Mark 16. Oh, not me, not William Graham. Oh. The issue is, do you believe it? Do you want to claim it? Does it mean something to you? Hallelujah. Here, Jesus is asking Peter, do you love me? Yeah. Peter said, oh, I love you. Jesus is not, it's not, it's not, I don't agree. He had to ask him again the second time. In 21, 16, he said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? He said unto him, yeah, Lord, yeah, thou knowest. I love thee. He said unto him again, feed my sheep. He's not done. On 2.17, he asked him again, 21.17, he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? Now, Jesus is asking me and you, friends, do you love the Lord with all your heart? Do you love him more than anything else? Do you love him more than your job, your education, your whatever? They will perish one day. Do you love him more than that? Or do you put everything else before him? And you say, I love the Lord. You cannot do that and say you love him. God doesn't work that way. But I'm telling you something I know. I can prove it until I die. That God is a reward to them that did it just a second. I have seen him done it many times. I cannot deny him. I couldn't possibly deny him. When you are focused to follow him, when you are dedicated to follow him, you will see him right next to you. At the darkest of the hour, he's there. Amen. When there seems to be no one, he's there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In this still small voice, he's there. Amen. We spoke last week when Elijah wanted to see him. He was not in thunder. He was not in lightning. He was not in earthquake. He was in a still small voice. Hallelujah. Amen. Love us down me. Yes. Do you love him? Do you love him? Amen. With all your heart? Hallelujah. In Acts of the Apostle, now Peter has been inoculated. You know, Peter has received what he was waiting for. When you come to Acts chapter 3, in the gates called beautiful, you know what he did. But I'm going to pick from 3.16. Because Peter said on 3.16, And his name, true faith, in his name, had made this man strong. Whom you have seen, you know, that it is the faith which is by him had given this man perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Hallelujah. Yeah. Peter is saying, after the experience in the gate called beautiful, it was by the name of this Jesus Christ. It was by faith in him alone and nothing else. Every other ground is a sinking sand. But on Jesus Christ, the solid rock I stand. He said it's on his name. On his name you can heal the sick. On his name you can overcome. No other name. No other name. No other religion. No other doctrine, but on Jesus Christ alone. That's what Peter is saying. He said, yes, no other name I used, but this name alone. It doesn't matter what devil is doing in your life. It doesn't matter what holy you find yourself. The name of Jesus Christ is more level. Hallelujah! Amen. It doesn't matter the pit you find yourself. Amen. It doesn't matter the condition you find yourself. Amen. Here is a man who has been laying there in the gate called beautiful. He could not move. He sat there every day begging for bread. Here is Peter who was walking around naked. Naked. In the book of John, but nine, Acts of the Apostle, he's no longer the same.
later, what happened? He got the key now. Amen. The key of faith. That's what we need, friends. The key of faith. With that key of faith, you can unlock every everything, every need. Amen. If you're a student, the exam is so simple. Amen. If you need a job, you give it to you. You need a wife, you give it to you. Whatever you need, Amen. he has it. Amen. He still has it today. You want to give it to somebody. Amen. Do you want it? Amen. Hey, Peter, running around naked. Today, he stood there and declared, Seven of God, not do I have. But in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Amen. The man rose. Amen. And that's a sign for the people. And the prophet said, sometimes people will go and worship the sign. When Moses in the wilderness raised his brazen serpent, said anyone that look on this serpent will be healed. The prophet said, now they made a mistake. They begin to worship the serpent, the brazen serpent. Mm -hmm. William Branham came. He was a sign, but he was not the destination. A sign is to point you to the destination. That's right. And people began to worship the sign. Without getting to the destination, they stop short. Amen. And because they stop short, we are still here in this condition. That's why there will be a movement of the bride to move from all this dogma Amen. and come to dossier the Lord's destination. Then the talk that's what will happen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what God is waiting for. Amen. In the book of Timothy, without controversy, Timothy 3.16, you know the scripture. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. It was God that manifested in flesh. Amen. So it was not a man. Someone will say to you, oh, you know, Jesus Christ is from the Jew. I know one famous man on YouTube who was talking about Jesus who is from Jesus. Jesus is not from Jew. It is the blood of God that saved me, not blood of a Jew. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and, and Paul is writing in 1 Timothy 3, 16, with that controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Amen. God manifested in flesh. There's no more argument about that. Hallelujah. Yeah. You see, sometimes I love the three sixteens. You just went to John three sixteen. Now First Timothy three sixteen. Now we're gonna look again Second Timothy three sixteen. Oh. I love the three sixteen somehow today. Hallelujah. Yeah. They gave you some inspiration, so I stay with them. In Second Timothy three sixteen, now I say all scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God Amen. and is profitable for doctrine. Amen. It's profitable for reproach, Amen. for correction, hallelujah, Amen. for correction and for instruction in righteousness, hallelujah. Amen. Like we said in the book of Proverbs, you say correction is love Amen. and love is correction. Amen. When you spare the rod, what happened to the child? You spoil the child. Amen. It is the one you love that you correct. Amen. Correct is not hatred. Because the word of God is to correct me and you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we can be righteous before him. Amen. Jesus said, be thou righteous. Amen. As the Lord thy God is righteous. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. Glory. In 1 Corinthians again, 3.16. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 3.16, he says this. Know ye not, you are the temple of God. Hallelujah. And that the spirit of God dwells in you. Oh my. That's a powerful scripture, friends. Amen. You're looking for the temple of God? He's talking to you. He's sitting here. It's not this building. You are the temple of God. Wonderful. So when we come together, we come for the union of the saints. You come for the union of the saints, fellowship of the saints. Amen. For the saints to come together in agreement. Amen. To fortify one another, to strengthen one another. That's Amen. what we come together for. Amen. We don't come to beg for bread. Amen. We don't come to beg anybody anything. No, sir. We're not beggars. Is that right? Amen. We're not beggars, but we come to fortify one another. Amen. When I see you fortify my faith, Amen. and I fortify your faith, Amen. hallelujah. Amen. If there's something I need to correct, you need to tell me. Amen. If there's something you need to correct, I should tell you. Hallelujah. Amen. But if I be the pastor and stand here and preach, it's, it's the word of God. You take the word of God. Yes, you eat the word of God. You manifest the word of God. Amen. That's what God told, he told yeah. John. Take the word. Eat the word. Yeah. Amen. Shall be honey in your mouth, be bitter in your stomach, Amen. hallelujah. Amen. Because that's what it's supposed to be, sober than two edges sword. Yes, Even piercing our son that the very intent of man. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the word of God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory. Blessed be the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Blessed be his holy name. Amen. I don't want to take the whole Hebrews 11 because I have it here. But you know it. The reason I put it there in my line of preaching this morning is to let you know that when the Bible is talking about faith, yes, this faith is because of the word of God. And the word of God is the love of God. So when the Bible says by faith, it means by loving God. Amen. See now, you can substitute that.
By faith means by loving God. You see, the Bible said that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for it is by it, by it, by that faith, our fathers obtained good report. He said, true faith, which means true loving God. You see now, true faith. They, they understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. Yeah. Because the word of God is love. God is love. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, he began to name them. From 11.4, one by one. By faith, Abel. By faith, Enoch. By faith, Noah. By faith, Abraham. All by faith. What is this faith based on? It's based on the word of God. It means by taking the word of God. So when you take the word of God, it means you love God. Do you love me, Jesus said? Feed my lamb. Amen. What does it mean? Teach them my word. Amen. Stand for me. Take the word in the word, but if the word, that's the love of God in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can read that Hebrews 11. It, it was a blessing unto me, but we're not going to take the whole scripture. It's rather lengthy, but blessed be the holy name of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be his holy name. Now, William Abraham is speaking here on the, on the message fellowship, 1956. Uh, April 12, on line 31, he said, The Christian experience is based solely and holily upon, upon, Come unto me, ye that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. We are tossed about with everything until you come to Christ. Then it is all finished. Amen. Rested in Christ, Amen. perfectly, no matter what comes and goes, Amen. nothing can touch us without it coming over the shepherd. He has to permit it. The Bible said, again, that's what we preached this morning, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. That's our first scripture this morning. See, he has to come over the shepherd say, I am the door. No man can come in without me accepting it. You see, you see, you can, you see, you that, you, 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 when God permits anything, it's working to your good. When God permits anything, it's working to your good. So would sickness be the same thing? Certainly. That God might heal you to show a great testimony. Hallelujah. Amen. Give you a little something to move you on. Hallelujah. Amen. All things work together for good. Hallelujah. In the message, whether than Solomon, the prophet was talking there about Jonah. In that message, he talked about Jonah. Greater than Solomon is here, 1962, June 28. He started from line 42. But he was saying something about Jonah. The prophet Jonah. Hallelujah. The prophet was talking there that everybody thinks that Jonah is a backslider. Is that right? If somebody asks you who is Jonah, what would be your first answer? He was running away from God. Is that right? Yes. That's what I taught in Sunday school. Is that right? Yes. But not exactly true. Hallelujah. <laughs> because everything was together for good. Amen. It turns out that the people of Nineveh, they worship fish. The people of Nineveh worship fish. Mm -hmm. They live around the ocean, so they worship what some people call mummy water and all those things. Mm -hmm. They worship images from the fish, from the sea. That's Nineveh. Mm -hmm. So God sent Jonah go to Nineveh. Instead of going to Nineveh, he went to Tashish. But God knew that on the way to Tashish, the sea will be troubled. And Jonah will be thrown into the water. Mm -hmm. And God made a special fish. In that message, the prophet said, a man was arguing with him. The man brought well. He said, show me how this well can swallow a human being. He said, the well doesn't have big neck. How can a human being go in? The prophet said, you don't read the scripture right. God made a special well. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God made a special well. Is that right? The same donkey was talking to Balaam. Tell me how many donkeys are talking. But God made a donkey to speak. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Is there anything impossible for God to do? No. We just believe the word of God and move on. Amen. Hallelujah. So here is Jonah running away from Nineveh, going to Tashish. God set him down there in the belly of the well. He has to come by the belly of the well to Nineveh. Amen. When he came around the bank, the, the, the fish spit him out. And the people saw the fish. This man came with our God. Amen. Our God brought this man here. Amen. You see, our God is in the fish. Amen. You see now, hallelujah. Amen. So they turn around and say, he is a man of God. Amen. Our God brought him, hallelujah. Amen. All things work together for good. Amen. For them that love the Lord. Because God knows your steps. Amen. Amen. He knows what will happen before it ever happens. Yes. If he doesn't, then he's not God. Amen. He foreknew us. He 
predestinated us. He called us. He adopted us. He is the one. All he's asking us is conform to his image. That's all you have to do. Conform to his image. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's what the prophet was talking about in that message. You can listen to that message. It was glad, it, it, it glad in my heart. The next message is his wonder to perform. 1958. January 12th. There the prophet said, like it. And then again, we wonder in the scripture when he's written, all things will work together for good to them that love God. And many times, when maybe the last of the correction is laying upon us, we wonder how that could be working good for us. But that's it all over. Then when we look back, we can praise him. For it is because he know it. We do not know. We just act obedient to his word and to his chastening. See, he never did chasten us unless we had need for it. Amen? And sometimes we might think that we wasn't guilty. See, maybe we are not. But he knows just how to do it. See, he knows how to do it. Hallelujah. Here I am, the Lord, he said. Just use me now, he said, the prophet. No matter what the path is, stay with it. Anyhow, and God will work it all right. The first step of the righteous is ordered by the Lord. And that is also the scripture. Hallelujah. Amen. In the message, results of decision. I listened to that this morning here. God does that sometimes. He lets something strike you. So he can show you a little extra mercy. See, you know, just a little of his goodness so that you will walk a little closer to him. So the Bible said that all things will work together for good to them that love the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. In the message, what does it take to chasten life? What does it take to make life of a Christian, to chasten the life of a Christian? 1957, the prophet said that. And we are taught that his footstep of the righteous is honored by the Lord. And everything works together for good to them that love the Lord. God just brings things around to happen that way. It's his great love to his people. Sometimes he has to take you through some dark places. But only to show you light. And our fathers, they walk the world. Doesn't matter what it is. Job. Family affair, friends, why do you worry? He made me, he made you. He knows what we need. Hallelujah. Amen. All you have to make sure is that you love God with all your heart. Amen. Make sure your own heart doesn't condemn you. Amen. Don't come to God with the excuses. Amen. Because he has made a provided way. Make sure your heart doesn't condemn you. You are the temple of God. You ought to manifest God today. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the prophet is going to close with us here in the message, possessing all things. He said, oh, tonight... We may not be rich in this world's good, but we possess all things. The church itself possesses all things, yet poor, yet rich, and possesses all things. I like that. And today, the true believer is cast out among the people. They call them fanatics, holy lola, or some kind of an insulting name, some kind of a religious fanatic, and yet he is the heir to the whole heaven and earth. Blessed are the meek, they shall inherit the earth. Oh my, talk about pushing out in a cabin or something and hardly enough money to pay for your rent. Yet you own it all. Amen? Amen? Amen. You have to work and toil and sweat for a few dollars to make an end of honest living, to put shoe on your children's feet and to fit their little hungry mouth. And yet you own all things. Hallelujah. You are, hallelujah, are you here with me? Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. If he's making my heart glad, I own all things. I am here to all things. Don't look at my condition today. Hallelujah. I will look at your condition. You are here to all things. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, the mix shall inherit the earth. Are the mix here? Are you here? Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. The earth belongs to us and everything therein. Because my father gave me possession. Hallelujah. Amen. See, the prophet said, the meek shall inherit the earth. They possess it all. Oh my, I like that. They are possessors of the earth. Okay? The believers. The believers, they have it. They have the abstract deed. That's right. By Jesus Christ. He shall be the possessor of the entire universe. That's right. The meek shall inherit the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. You say, Brother Abraham, I need healing. The promise is yours. But if you ever get it, you ain't going to get it easy. I'm going to tell you that. You're going to have to take it away from Satan. Hallelujah. Amen. You are going to have to take it away from who? From who? Call him by his name. From who? Oh, I feel like you're not alive. From who? Satan. Hallelujah. You have to tell Satan, get it behind me. Oh, my. Get it behind me. Oh, my. That's what 
just reminded me of something. Get thee behind me. I was going to work on Thursday. After I dropped my wife, I'm driving to work. I never began to talk to me. I never say, you know what? You're going to be in trouble in 2018 because you're going to have too many taxes to pay. Too many taxes. He said, you see, your wife had a second job and she was getting paid as a consultant, so you didn't pay the tax yet. When you find it, it's going to be a lot of tax. I said, you know, it's kind of true. And then I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know who's talking now. Then I took my hand, I slapped it on my passenger seat of the car. Get him behind me, Santa! Get him behind me, Santa! Get him behind me, Santa! That's what I did. And then I got to work. I'm sitting there. All of a sudden, my wife calls. Do you have a minute to talk? I say, yeah. He said, he called, the, the job just called her. I said to her, tell them to, to change the number they put, because I think they put too much for 2017. What well, they paid in January, they should have paid in December, but because in January, they can put it back for January this year, not last year. This and that. She said, okay, okay, okay. She spoke to them. They said, yes. Yes. He took out almost 10,000 out. <laughs> so now I look at her, okay, this is manageable. We can pay this one this year. Hallelujah. Amen. It was answered the same day, Brother Chris. The same day, Brother. The same day. The same day. Amen. Not the next the same day. Hallelujah. You have to tell them, you have to be able to speak. Yeah. When you know who is talking to you, don't shut up. You just challenge him, say, Get me behind me, Satan. That's what you say. Amen. Open your mouth and speak. That's what Prophet is saying here. See, 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 that's Prophet is saying. So I gotta get it. You see, 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 he said, say, give it back. He said, hand it over to me. Come in the name of the Lord, the possessor of heaven and earth. And I am here. Give it back, Satan. You took my child. You got her mixed up with the wrong boys. You took my boy and mixed him up with the wrong girl. I claim them. That's right. I claim my children. I claim my brother. I claim my sister. Yes, Satan. You you, you took them from, from, from God's house. You, you caused them out there. But I am coming after you. I claim them. Well, you know that. I am an heir of all things. Amen. Yeah. It's given to me. I am an heir. I can claim everything that God promised me. Amen. Oh. There you are. Yeah. It's yeah. mine. Yeah. How do you get it? Something you've done? No, sir. It is the unmerited gift that God gave us. Yeah. And it's ours. It's yeah. ours. Yeah. It belongs to us. Yeah. Satan cannot hold it. Yeah. If you can, can go and get it. Yeah. The scripture authorizes the word yeah. with faith to say, it is mine. Lay it down, Satan. Amen. Glory. I like that. Satan, you lay it down. Amen. You took it from me. Amen. You give it back. Amen. Because I am serving a notice to you. Amen. I've got the notice written. It's Amen. right here in the world. Heaven and earth will pass away. Amen. But this notice, Amen. this notice shall not pass away. And so you, you, you come with this notice to serve unto you. That Jesus Christ said, whatever I ask, whatever I ask, in his father's name, he will give it to me. Amen. If I say to this mountain, be moved, yes. and don't doubt in my heart, yes. but believe that it will move. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I have that. I say, Amen. lay it down. Amen. That gets him started. Yes, don't, don't get him started. That gets him running, the prophet said. Lay it down. Because I have come with the scripture authority. Amen. I am a believer, the prophet said. You get Prophet said, Yes, sir. He said, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am an heir of divine healing. I am an heir of joy. I got it right here to be happy. So, what makes you so happy? I got a right to be happy. How do you know? Because I am here to eat. Amen. Woo. Now I feel religious. The prophet said, Yes, sir. I'm an heir to happiness. I am an heir to joy. I'm an heir to peace. I am an heir to eternal life. I am an heir to the Holy Ghost. Amen. I am an heir to every evidence. I get it. Amen. I am an heir to the authority of God. Amen. Who made you that? Not me. He said, Every one of you is an heir to the same thing. I am an heir to the throne. He that overcometh shall set me on my throne as I have overcome and on my father's throne. Amen. I am an heir to all things, not just one thing, all things, Amen. everything Amen. under your feet, Amen. even death, Amen. even death Amen. under your feet. Hallelujah. Grave is under your feet. Hell is under your feet. Amen. This is the word of the prophet. Grave is under your feet. Amen. Life is hidden in God Amen. through Jesus Christ. Amen. And you are rose again to eternal life. And we are sitting in heavenly places.
in Christ Jesus. Oh my. He said, Woo, call us anything you want to. Call us what you want to. Say we are crazy. Say we are crazy. But we are here. Here to what? Here to all things. Blessed be the name of the living God. Amen. Do you love the Lord? Amen. Do you love him? Oh, I love him. Oh, I